Hey, it's TB Shores. I'm back. It's still May the 25th, 2015. Um, I want to just touch back on what I just shared in the last video. Here we see that is taken in consideration. We don't know if we have the right calendar, but looking at the calendar, that's in front of us. We see Passover fell on Nisan the 14th which was our April the 3rd, as we see in Scripture. It's the 14th for Passover. It's the 15th for Unleavened Bread. Then we count seven days, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which is the Sabbath. And then to start counting for the Omar, we have to go, oh, excuse me, first we have to do first fruits, which falls, on the morrow after the Sabbath, as we see here in verse 11 of Leviticus 23, morrow after the Sabbath. So we counted seven days of unleavened bread. It falls on the Sabbath here. So we have to go to the morrow after the Sabbath, which is the 12th, for our way sheath offering. Okay? And then we have to go to the next Sabbath, to start counting our seven Sabbaths for the counting of the Omar, or the Omar, however you want to pronounce it. Okay, so we see this would be the first, this would be the second, this would be the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, that's where we just passed, where we thought that Pentecost fell. And then that brings us to the seventh. Remember, I had not counted the seven days of unleavened bread before I did the wave sheaf offering on the calendar because I thought that the wave sheaf offering had to fall within the death, burial, and resurrection days, just as this calendar shows the counting of the Omar beginning on the fifth. Okay, because it has to be a morrow after the Sabbath. Okay, and then we have to count seven Sabbaths. That's why we started on the 18th of April. We had to go to the next Sabbath and start counting. So there was two in April, three, four, five, six, seven, which brings us to May, oh, excuse me, the 30th. For our 49th day of the Omer. And I didn't get the 31st printed on this. But I wrote it in on the next month. Where it falls. Which is right here. Which is June the 25th. This would be Omer count 50. Okay. On May the 31st. Now that is. If we have the right calendar. And, you know, we can't be assured of that, just like I pointed out before. Um, the next thing I want to show you is, remember how we spoke about Second Passover? And I really feel Second Passover is very significant um, because we are soon to come into the time when the destroyer pays another visit. And I pointed this out in the other video. The first Passover was all about the sacrifice of the lamb, the shedding of the blood, the protection of the blood being applied, okay? And the reason, the purpose for that was all about protection from the destroyer so that he would pass over when he came. And that is what we're about to see again. Now I was going to do this later. I wasn't sure when. Um, and I may not get into as much detail as I had originally thought because I think the reason the Lord is having me do this at this point is because he does not want those that were counting the Omer and we just passed what many thought was the time for the bride. He doesn't want you discouraged. Okay? 
Um, but the thing I want to point out here on the calendar is this. If, if things go on the schedule of the second Passover and we're on the right calendar, that's two ifs, okay? I think second Passover holds more significance in our timing than first Passover. Now, you know, we, we did learn about Second Passover and the time of Hezekiah and what all that represented and what the Lord showed us within that about uh, Nepal and the quake. I did videos on that. Um, go back and look at it if, if you're not sure about what I'm talking about there. But if we look at Second Passover and we, we look in Second Chronicles, and I'm thinking it was chapter. Mm-mm. 29 maybe I'm thinking it was chapter 29 28, 29, right there close we see about the time of Hezekiah how it was all about restoring the kingdom back to the way that it should be pleasing to God and that is the time that we're fixing to come into and what will what will set things in motion is going to be an event that um, affects all mankind. I'll just put it that way for the moment. But what we want to look at is the time of Hezekiah, what it represented, and why I think it is more of a focus for the time that we're in, for the simple fact that first Passover was a foreshadowing, okay? Then we had Christ was his fulfillment Passover where the the fulfilling of what was foreshadowed in the first Passover began. And we saw the Lamb of God was sacrificed and we saw that his blood was applied as our covering, our protection. But we have yet to see the complete fulfillment which I believe is what Second Passover is about, um, where the blood, as it did in the first Passover, provides protection from the destroyer when he returns. And we'll get into that in um, a later time. But right now I want us to focus on Second Passover. Now we just looked at dates that point to May 31st. And as I said, I can't tell you with certainty. But what the Lord seems to be reassuring me of is to keep watching because we are in that time frame. And the main thing is for us to have learned along the way, not just to be sitting here watching, counting a day, looking at a day, will this day, well, it's coming, oh, it didn't happen, and then fall apart when it passes. It's about what we are to learn in the process. I have learned an awful lot about Passover, what I was symbolized in the first Passover as far as what it was foreshadowing, um, how that we have been, whether we realize it or not, we have been focused on and, and I think that was Satan's intention, was to not let us focus on um, things that were to come. Because if we think about things that are to come, we see a bigger need to have Christ in our life. But, um, like I said, I think this is another day to watch, but I don't know for certain. It's certainly a day of interest. But what I want to point out is the second Passover uh, time frame. If we look at how it would play out with second Passover, we see that it would fall, Passover would fall on the 14th of the second month, which is Iyer. And then unleavened bread would fall on the 15th. Then we would count seven days again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then we would have to go to the, for the first fruits, the wave sheep offering, we'd have to go 
to the next morrow after the Sabbath. So we'll go to the next Sabbath and then the morrow after. Okay? And that will begin our... Um, well, that would actually be... I thought that wrote wrong. That would actually be when our first fruits or our wave sheet would be offered. And that would be the 17th of May. Okay, then we would go to the next Sabbath, because remember, we had to go to the next Sabbath. That would be where we're at now. We would go to the next Sabbath, and to the morrow after that, to begin our counting for the Omar. So if we count seven Sabbaths, this would be the first one. One, two... May. This is June. June. We counted two, three, four, five, six. Where's my July? Um, where is there? It is five, six, seven. So seven, um, seven sevens. If we're looking at the second Passover, and we're counting things the same as before. And like I say, I, I don't know with certainty that is the way it will play out. I'm just giving you a scenario to look at. But then this would be your seventh seven, which is July. July the 4th. So that would be your seventh seven. And then your 50th count of the Omer would be on July. Excuse me. July the fifth okay and that's just letting you see and if you notice jade helm is just a little over a week from that i don't know if that holds significance i'm just pointing it out but i'm just trying to get you to understand there's so many different ways that we could look at this and count this and the Lord has not, to my knowledge, spoken to anyone as of yet about the absolute of any of these counts. We can only go by what we feel the Lord is leading us in and what the scripture says. This is what I go by, 14th and 15th, then count seven days. And then we go to the morrow after that Sabbath. And then... Think about that a minute. Then we have to go to the next Sabbath to start counting for our 50. Okay? That is my understanding of what these scriptures are saying. I went back over them several times because I thought somehow I have overlooked something. Plus, you know, I do believe with everything in my heart we are in that time frame. But to be able to pinpoint a specific day I, I unless the lord shows it to us um we're not going to know with certainty i have my ideas but my ideas are that um they are my ideas i feel led by the lord with but unless he tells me that i need to put it out then i don't but i am just saying that counting by this we can have an idea because we go by God's word, okay? We go by God's word, not our thoughts. Um, I'm trying to think if there's something else I need to point out within this. It's, rem it, it's important to remember um, what is foreshadowed and what is the details within the first Passover. And what all that means to us as in a fulfillment of all that. As I spoke of just a little earlier, I feel second Passover is very significant. Uh, I feel like the Lord has shown me that first Passover is the was, the foreshadowing of things to come. The fulfillment Passover, as I call it, is the is of what we are in, which is the age of grace. 
and the is to come. We see this in scriptures, was, is, and is to come. Okay? The is to come is about a second Passover. A second Passover. That's why it was so important for us to understand Second Chronicles. I believe, like I said, I believe it started in chapter 29. I'd have to look back. Well, let's just do that. I got it right here. Second Chronicles 29. I think it'd be good to start in 28 because that's where we read about how Hezekiah defiled the kingdom. 29 is about when Hezekiah took reign. Uh, 30 is preparation. Let's see, let me get over here. Preparation for Passover. 31 is idols destroyed. And I think there's a lot to be learned in these chapters because I think second Passover, quote unquote, is what is about to take place. It is like the is to come of all that we've talked about. Okay, thank you.